Godwin Obaseki wins the much anticipated Edo election, but how fair was the process? And once again, requests are made to halt the bill seeking to amend the EFCC Act. This time, the calls are made by Sarah. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome back. This is Plots Politics. Let's get the ball rolling. The Edo State gubernatorial election has finally taken place with Godwin Obaseki securing his tenure for another four years. Before and after the result were announced, several stakeholders had come out to commend the conduct of the election. Many of these stakeholders had previously predicted that the election would be awash with violence. However, how did the election perform in aspects such as vote buying and some other vices? Joining us to discuss this right here in our studio is Nelson Ekujumi, who is a public affairs analyst and interestingly, he was also in a do state. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. And we are also being joined by Ola Dimeji Fabi, a proud, I must say, a proud PDP member who is joining us from Abuja. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, guys. Don't worry. Good evening, Nigerians. This is, this is when to display your bragging right. <laughs> Let's start with you. Uh, what's the feeling like? Uh, we've had all manner of uh, reactions. We've had PDP saying this is democracy at work. But we often hear APC saying that it is only when PDP wins that democracy is at work. I mean, in a sarcastic manner. Do you really think that democracy really prevailed this time? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to say that democracy is, involved, is evolving and that we thank God for that. Uh, we're not at this point in 2019 and we're not at this point in 2015 and down the lane. Uh, but before I go into that, I just want to um, use this opportunity to thank Nigerians and the Edolites for what uh, they've done. I want to thank them for standing strong. I want to thank them for their stance, uh, you know, you know, on what they believe in. And then I want to congratulate His Excellency Governor Godwin Obaseki and his deputy, uh, Philip Shoaibu, for their resilience and then fighting for the people of Edo State. Uh, it, it, it wasn't just, it didn't just come cheap. And then again, I want to thank my party, the leadership of my party, under the leadership of Prince Uche Secondos and all the stakeholders that participated in that election. Again, I want to thank the APC because uh, from day one, they were the architect of their own problems. I want to thank them for giving us the opportunity <laughs> to have Governor, Bas Governor Baseki in Akiti. We knew this was the way it's going to be. Uh, but let me tell you, democracy is coming up, and then uh, and uh, we are going to enjoy it for a very long time. Let me use the opportunity again to thank the INEC and uh, to commend them for the job they've done, and this, our security agencies, for that matter, for maintaining a very neutral position this time around. I'm sure they didn't receive any instruction to do otherwise. If, if, if that had happened, perhaps we won't be here talking like this. So, and that, that would lead me to thank you, Mr. President for taking a very, I mean, strong position and then giving directives that ensure that the election was credibly, credibly conducted and widely adjudged as free, fair, and credible. So we thank God for all that. I will ask to see more, but I congratulate the entire Nigerians for, for a dawn of a new era in our democratic, uh, democratic uh, experience. Okay, thank you uh, for that opening remark. But we just quickly want to take a short break, and when we come back, I'll be taking the opening remark of Nelson no Kujumi. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics, in case you just joined us, and we're reviewing the process that took place Saturday and Sunday in Edo State. And we have with me here in our studio, Nelson Okujimi, who was an observer at the election under the auspices of uh, Transition Monitoring Group. And we also have uh, Oladimeji Fabi, who is a member of PDP. So to you, 
several reports, several angles, but as someone who was on the field, can you give your assessment? Well, my assessment is that uh, just like it has always been in the past, I never came to the election uh, arrangements with their mandate you know, to conduct a free, fair, and credible election. And they did that creditably well. It's just unfortunate that uh, a lot of the predictions with regards to violence in the election was because of the utterances and the actions of the major political parties. You had them raising all sorts of allegations against one another, that even on election day, uh, just like in their character, when election is being conducted, even when they know it's not true, a candidate will come out and say, oh, I'm being rigged out. Oh, they are cheating me. When the election now concludes, and that person who has made the allegation, if the election has been concluded and is declared the winner, we now, the same person will now come out and be commended. So if we are a serious people, we should have asked them, when you were raising those allegations, can you please substantiate that fact, that allegations they have raised with fact? So for me, the elections came, INEC was on time, they came with their materials, we had very efficient uh, function of the smart card data. The deployment of the security agencies was very good. Uh, days before the election, few days before the election, the, all the tension, when we got to be uh, do state, the tension, we couldn't feel it anywhere in the air because we saw people going about their lawful businesses, even as at 12 a.m. until 24 hours before the election. You still saw people in clubs, in, you know, in restaurants, people were still out there enjoying themselves. So you, want, you were forced to ask yourself that. Where is this tension? that we've been hearing before we came into this state. So by and large, it was a successful election. The outcome you know, was in tandem with how the people voted, even though we saw cases, you know, massive, cases, uh, massive instances of vote buying across parties where the party agents became like a boss, uh, boss canvassers that, oh, come and, and come and board my particular boss. This is what I have to offer you. And unfortunately, the people bought into it, and you know they were willing, you know, conspirators. And uh, like we say, the people get the type of government you know they deserve. Uh, the only snag for me that is worrisome is that don't forget in 2016, when we had the Edo election, we complained bitterly about the vote buying you know syndrome, and we carried it to the Undo election which we labeled, or we, there was this coinage for it in Ondo, it became Dibo, Kuhusibe. So we only hope that what we have started again in Edo in 2020, we don't take it again to Ondo and have a reenactment of what happened in 2016. In that way, I, I think the fairness of our democratic process, the fairness of our election will be questionable that are people really voting based on their conscience or they are voting because they have been monetarily induced. And for me, that is worrisome. Okay. Uh, uh, for me, that, that, that's a very strong uh, issue that Nelson has raised here. Uh, now, I want to talk to you as a politician now. Um, do you really think that this is about the will of the people or about the inducement? Oh, if you, uh, well, for me, it's not about inducement per se. I think this is about the will of the people. And I'll tell you, I'll give you two instances. Um, look at, let's look at 2016 election between these two gentlemen. Um, when, you, when you look at the, the margin of victory, it was less than 5,000, all right? The result was so close. And when you look at this election, that was this just concluded election, you see the margin of victory between the two parties. And then that's to tell you that people have spoken. It's about them. Yes, parties do give money during elections. And if the reports, by, if we go by the report where we heard that as a matter of fact, the APC was given voters between 5,000 and 10,000 a year. I, I mean, you, you, and still that didn't work for them. That's it to tell you, that is to tell you, that will clearly tell you that it's about the people. It's about what the people want, and the people of Edo State spoke and spoke very loudly. Let me tell you something. Historically, Edo has a rich history as a center of black civilization. And the, the outcome of this election, as further confirmed, in addition to that, 
It has confirmed that state as a vision of democracy. So if people, like, like, just like my brother there said, that uh, you know the politician will say this during the election and immediately after the election, if he wins, is this some is 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 normal? And the news, the noise, the issue of um, uh, tension and not whatnot, you can't run away from that in a standalone election. Okay, you uh, discover that me, we have similar you know, issues. You know, we always have state. issues with, with time, so I want to take advantage of the time now. When you said APC paying five thousand, ten thousand. How much did PDP pay? That was what we heard. I didn't hear that PDP gave money, but I said that was what we heard was that APC was sharing 5,000, just in response to what you said, that it's about the people. If it, I said if it was true that APC gave such an amount and they still didn't win the election, that means it's not about inducement. It's about the people. It's about what the people want. I wanted to get that clearly. I said that was what we read. Okay. That they did that. If they had done that much and the city couldn't win, that means it's not about the inducement per se. It's about now what people really want. People wanted a basket. They wanted PDP, and they spoke very loudly about that, and that that solved it. That 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 has also thrown another uh, uh, line of conversation. Two things I want you to react to. Um, he heard about APC. I don't know what observers noticed. Whether you can also speak categorically about how much. The other party was given. And secondly, it did say that uh, they wanted PDP. They wanted Obaseki. Well, the, These two issues are... The issues are that, one, that money exchange hands between voters and party agents or party stalwarts. You could see it. They were not even, dis they were not even hiding it in some polling stations. It was very, very obvious. So it would be just like in 2016 again. In Edo State, we have had elections become like carnival, where people will go home and call others, oh, come, they are sharing money. Come and collect your own and let us go and you know have a nice time. Right across the polling stations or the polling environment, you had uh, emergency beer parlors. You had emergency bucaterias. <laughs> So people were having a nice time because there was mo money was flowing be between the between the political uh, parties and the electorates, and that's why I said the electorates and the political parties were willing collaborators because th that was I think that also contributed to the low level of violence. People were enjoying themselves. That oh, collecting from both sides, collecting from both sides. And were you able to were you privy to how much was given? Because he has mentioned five the to amount I witnessed. Personally, was two thousand naira. Oh I witnessed two thousand naira in some polling stations. How much they were in other places? The party agent will bring out a sheet of paper. Will copy. Maybe they were copying the voters' card of the would be. This is raw cash now. You raw cash. You see them four five hundred naira in some places. You see them give out two uh, one thousand naira. naira notes. So I saw majorly. I saw two thousand naira. Somebody told me that some some were even giving out one thousand. But the reports some gave was that they were given as much as 5,000. I didn't see 5,000. I saw 2,000. I can attest to 2,000. Were you able, were you, can you also attest that that influenced the votes? Of or course. Or from both sides? It, it could, because when you see how it happened in... I said what happened in 2020 was a replica of 2016. Okay. Where people will go and call others. I, I hope you will not be invited to testify <laughs> at the tribunal. No, I even have I even had a video of when people were complaining. I even have a video. I refuse to delete that. Okay. Video, where uh, people were complaining that the money they are giving them is not enough. They were wow. speaking the local language. Wow. Okay, let's just quickly look at what Fabi said, and I'll go back to Fabi. He did say that people wanted Obaseki. Someone will say that if Obaseki had stayed in APC, he probably wouldn't have won. That it was because he moved from APC to PDP. Now, I'm talking to you as a political analyst now, no longer as an observer. Yes. I, for me, I think if Obaseki has stayed in APC, I believe the Kulu has also have won. He would have used the incumbency factor because this was a man in power in the state in the last four years. Definitely would have built some structures. And you also saw, like Fabi rightly said, the APC was the architect of its own misfortune. Because this was a party that presented a candidate for an election in which 
none of the states, none of the party's governors attended their rally. Even the mega rally that was supposed to close, uh, that was supposed the to campaign. be the grand finale, was called off. We never had a president, we never had a vice president, you know, attend the rally. But in the other party, you saw their last rally. Their governors were there. There was that moral support. And there was this information that even some governors in the APC were working seriously because you re recognize that when the issue about whether Obaseki should run or not run emerged, you saw that the governors of the APC were divided. And when the, part, when the ticket was taken away from Obaseki, you could feel the anger in them. It was like the state of that, oh, we are going to teach those people who have, uh, who have engaged in this act, we are going to teach them a bitter lesson. That is why today, you could, if you have read the statement credited to a uh, former governor of uh, Imo State, Rochas Okurocha, and also in, uh, in Undo, in uh, Ikiti State right now, the parties that loggerheads with Governor Kayo Defaimi, who has been alleged to be one of the major backers of Obaseki. Governor Obaseki. Okay, so, uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get your attention to this. Is this a victory for PDP, so to say, to say that, oh, it is about the party and not really about the incumbency? Tied to that, tied to that. I'm also one. I'm also bothered that the, this power of incumbency is usually narrated around how uh, 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 spending the, the, the government's uh, money. Because if you're talking about Ondo involving vote buying, you're also talking about Edo involving vote buying. Where is this money coming from? Well, thank you very much. Let me start from where you stopped. Anybody who wants to run an election, of course, obviously must have prepared. And uh, whether the uh, I mean, you must have supporters. Uh, if you are lucky to be in the ruling government, there's no how you will not touch government money. Hmm. If, you are, if you are not there, you must have friends outside your party or anywhere who might probably support you. Now, let me now go to the way you started from, about whether this is victory for Edo people. Yes, it's for PDP. This victory, by and large, is victory for democracy and our country. All right? And that is where my concern is, because I'm actually concerned about the impact of this of the just converted election on our democracy. So as far as I know, as far as, I, as I'm concerned, yes, it's victory for people, but largely it's, for, it's, it's victory for our country and our democracy. And I say this with all sense of, um, I mean, responsibility. Uh, uh, it, it, it's part of so many things. You know, a lot of people are talking about being a, a, a response to Godfatherism in Nigerian politics. Godfatherism has been on from time immemorial. And then if we have an Edo election that is that is changing that course for us now, we should be grateful. And I think every right-thinking Nigeria, whether you are in leadership position or you are a member, or a citizen, must embrace this. So the implication of this of Edo election is quite high as far as I as, as far as I as, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm more particular, I'm most particular about that. Now when you have, let me tell you something. Is a Yamu was not the candidate in this election. Adams or Shomole and Bola Metinubu in Lagos were the candidates. And that was why people reacted the way they reacted. So I think this has taught Adams or Shomole a very big lesson that you don't play God when you find yourself in this kind of situation. You should go back to history and see how he might, how he got to where he is. I'm sure you don't remember that before doing all this, you know, grandstanding. And that, uh, that aside, but for as far as I know, and as far as I I I I want to I want to say, uh, it, the 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 this result the result of Edo election has huge implication on our democracy, and we must not allow it to just free our will. And that's why, again, I uh, in my opening remark, I thank President Muhammadu Bari. If this only thing his government can achieve, giving us a legacy of free and fair, credible election, we will thank him. Even if as we know he's not doing anything on the other side, he's not giving any pass mark. If we can have pass mark on this, we will thank President Muhammadu Bari for giving us this. Fabi, I, I, I told you I'm going to be fair to you since you're always accusing me of not giving you enough time. Today, I'll give you more time. Let's stay on what you just mentioned. Now, when you talk about Godfatherism, is this peculiar to APC? Some have said that who is talking about Godfatherism? Has Obaseki not jumped from fry pan to fire, where we have a wiki, I mean, Governor Wiki raising his hand? What about that? Is your party, don't you also practice Godfatherism? 
No, see, this is the see. There is a clear difference. I mean, between the APC and the PDP. Yes, they have been called, even PDP. We have God for God for that. We used to have it in the past, but it's not there anymore because the the members of the party frowned against it. That was why you saw that you saw you see that was the reason you saw improvement in our internal democracy when we conduct primary elections. Now. This is not this godfrizing. Godfrizing is not limited to APC alone. It's across the party lines. Do you understand? Now, but if um, um, the, 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 the different, the, I mean, the difference between the APC and as it is now and PDP is that APC is. Let me give you this small instance. There is a team. There's a football team in Spanish La Liga called Baca. That team was built around one man, and that was Lionel Messi. And you discover that the moment our Messi is not in any match, they struggle to survive, to win. APC is built around President Muhammadu Bari alone. And that is the fear. And I'm happy that their, their members, Rokorocha, uh, Fayabi, said it today, that the moment Mr. President Muhammadu Bari is out of the equation, that party is going to collapse. Or it's go, it will collapse and it cannot resuscitate again. Now, the difference between them and PDP is that PDP is not a party of one man. We have stakeholders that are duly recognized. We have leaders who take this. Even when our uh, past presidents were there, they still consult with some stakeholders. We, see, we have a functional BOT. We have functional NEC. We have functional NWC. So you see that lots lot of leaders are involved in this. So it's not a part. That is the major difference between the APC and PDP. PDP is not a party of one man. PDP, APC is a party of one man. It's a party of Jagaban. It's a party of Bolatinu uh, uh, in, in the Southwest. It's a party of Bolatinubu. In the National, is the party of President Momodu Buhari. So yeah, how do you now expect them to, 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 to have an understanding? And let me tell you what play out, another thing that play out in Edo State. See, everything is tailored towards 2023. Adams Oshomole was Tinubu's national chairman. We've had this experience in the past in PDP too. I'm not going to go into that. And we know those of us who have been there understood how this game is being played. They needed to remove the thinkers of the APC that orchestrated this thing in Edo. They needed to remove the hands of Bola Tinubu against 2023. And I'll see how they will survive with that. Okay. And Adams Oshomole is... is the chairman of Tinubu. So if they don't remove Adam Soshomole, Tinubu will have his way. So okay. we see how that so will I mean, play out at the end of the day. Uh, uh, I wish me, them best of luck. Let me bring the conversation here. I, I didn't know whether uh, you shared some of the things he had said. Oh, <laughs> absolutely not. Okay, let me hear your own take. Yes, uh, unfortunately, I think uh, uh, Fabi is trying to hide behind the finger because uh, he talked of Godfatherism. And we all know very well that as we speak today, the new Godfather of the PDP is Governor Yeson Wiki. You recollect when the PDP wanted to hold its convention, and Governor Yeson Wiki said, unless they bring the convention to Port Harcourt, it will not hold. And we also saw how the old Koto towards Governor Yeson Wiki. Also, when the campaign council of the PDP was about to be launched, and Governor Yeson Wiki called the BOT uh, a, a, a task collectors, you saw how they all rushed down to Port Harcourt to beg the new godfather. So I think the concept of godfather, except that it is being abused, even in the Christian world, people, religious leaders have godfathers. That is why uh, the pastor of one of the churches recently uh, uh, caused or abused uh, an on-air personality for, you know, for abusing his uh, uh, Christian godfather. Godfather is people who mentor someone you know, to become, you know, in life you need mentoring. There must be people who have gone ahead of you. You need them to be able to trace your path so that you don't make mistakes. So when people come out and say uh, the vote in uh, Edo was because of uh, a vote against Godfather, no, I disagree absolutely. That was why I asked yesterday, or when I was on this station, that in 2016, who was throwing, who threw up the incumbent governor? Was there no godfather then? Okay. And even right now that the incumbent governor has gotten a, the return ticket, who was the godfather who was propping him up now? Is it not the same? Is it not another new? The, what has happened is that we have migrated in a do state now from the godfatherism of Adam Soshomole <laughs> to the godfatherism of Governor Yusong Wiki. Okay, quite a lot of questions you've raised there, and uh, we are also going to look at it. I'm sure Fabi is itching to respond to that, because he might also want to remind you that um, that's about the fact that Wiki had a candidate that he wanted to be the presidential candidate 
it didn't have its way. We had a tiku, but there are all different layers to this conversation, and we are going nowhere. I we just want to take a short break, and when we come back, we will stay on this issue. But enjoy this plus report. It was a tense electoral process. After hours of results collation, which spanned almost two days, 